Penelope Flamel stepped out of the prison cell. The door had never been locked. There was no need. Nothing could get past the Sphinx. But now the Sphinx was gone. Penelope breathed deeply. The sour odor of the creature, the musty combination of snake, lion, and bird, had lessened, allowing the usual smells of Alcatraz, salt and rusting metal, seaweed and crumbling stone, to take over. She turned to the left, moving swiftly down a long cell-lined corridor. She was on the rock, but she had no idea where she was, was within the huge crumbling complex. Although she and Nicholas had lived in San Francisco for years, she had never been tempted to visit the ghost-haunted island. All she knew was that she was deep below the surface of the earth. The only light came from an irregular scattering of low wattage bulbs set behind wire cages. Penelope's lips twisted in a wry smile. The light was not for her benefit. The Sphinx was afraid of the dark. The creature came from a time and place where there were really were monsters in the shadows. The Sphinx had lured away by the ghost of the Juan Miel de Alia. She had gone in search of the mysterious noises, the rattling bars and slamming doors that had suddenly filled the building. Every moment the Sphinx was away from her cell, Penelope's aura recharged. She wasn't back up to full strength. She would need to eat and sleep first. But at least she was no longer defenseless. All she had to do was keep out of the creature's way. A door slammed somewhere high above her, and Penelope froze as claws click-clacked. Then a bell began to toll, slow and solemn, lonely and distant. There was a sudden clatter of iron-hard nails on stone as the Sphinx raced off to investigate. Penelope folded her arms across her body and ran her hands up and down them, shivering slightly. She was wearing a sleeveless summer dress, and normally she'd be able to regulate her temperature by adjusting her aura, but she had very little power left and she was reluctant to use it in any way. One of the Sphinx's special talents was her ability to sense and then feed off magical energy. Penelope's flat sandals made no sound on the damp stones as she moved down the corridor. She was wary, but not frightened. Penelope Flamel had lived for more than 600 years, and while Nicholas had been fascinated with alchemy, she had concentrated on sorcery. Her research had taken her into some very dark and dangerous places, not only on this earth, but also in some of the adjoining shadow realms. Somewhere in the distance, glass shattered and tinkled to the ground. She heard the Sphinx hiss and howl in frustration, but that sound too was far away. Penelope smiled. The Alia was keeping the Sphinx busy, and no matter how hard she looked, she would never find him. Even a creature as powerful as the Sphinx had no power over a ghost or a poltergeist. Penelope knew that she needed to get to an upper level and out into the sunshine, where her aura would recharge more quickly. Once she was in the open air, she could use any of a dozen simple spells, cantrips and incantations she knew that would make the Sphinx's existence a misery. A Scythian mage, who had claimed to have helped build the pyramids for the survivors of Danu Talus who had settled in Egypt, had taught her a very useful spell for melting stone. Penelope would not hesitate to use it to bring the entire building down on top of the Sphinx. It would probably survive, Sphinxes are practically impossible to kill, but it would certainly be slowed down. Penelope spotted a rusting metal stairs and darted toward them. She was just about to put her foot on the bottom step when she noticed the gray thread spilling across the metal. Penelope froze, foot raised in the air. Then she slowly and carefully stepped back. Crouching down, she looked at the metal steps. From this angle, she could see the threads of spiderwebs crisscrossing and weaving through the stairs. Anyone who stepped onto this metal staircase would be caught. She backed away, staring hard into the gloomy shadows. The threads were too thick to have been made by any normal spider, and were dotted with tiny globules of liquid silver. Penelope knew a dozen creatures that could have spun the webs, and she didn't want to meet any of them, not here and now, while she was so drained of her power. Turning, she darted down a long corridor lit only by a single bulb at either end. Now that she knew what she was looking for, she could see the silver webs everywhere, stretched across the ceiling, spreading across the walls, and there were huge nests knotted in corners, growing in the deepest shadows. The webs' presence might explain why she had encountered no vermin in the prison. No ants, flies, mosquitoes, or rats. Once the nests hatched, the building would come alive with spiders, if indeed that's what the spinners were. Over the centuries, Pernelli had encountered elders who were associated with spiders, including Arachne and the mysterious and terrifying Spider Woman, but as far as she knew, none of them were aligned with Dee and the Dark Elders. Pernelli was hurrying past an open door, a perfect spiderweb framed in the opening, where she caught the hint of a sour, bitter stench. See, she slowed, then stopped. The smell was new. It wasn't the smell of the Sphinx. Turning back to the door, she went as close as she could to the web without touching it and peered inside. It took a moment, her eyes a moment to adjust to the darkness, and a moment longer to make sense of what she was seeing. Vetala. 
Penelope's heart began to beat so strongly in her chest, she could actually feel her flesh vibrating. Hanging upside down from the ceiling were a dozen creatures. Talons that were a cross between human feet and bird's claws bit deep into the soft stone, while leathery bat wings wrapped around skeletal human bodies. The upside down heads were beautiful, with the faces of young men and women not yet in their teens. Vitala. Pernelle mouthed the word silently. Vampires from an Indian subcontinent, and unlike Scatthatch, this clan drank blood and ate flesh. But what were they doing here? And more importantly, how had they gotten here? Vitala were always linked to a region or tribe. Pernelle had never known one out to leave its homeland. The sorceress turned slowly to look at the o other open doorways lining the gloomy corridor. What else lay hidden in the cells beneath Alcatraz? What was Dr. John D. planning?